had several free body diagrams for centripetal force. Uh, we're not actually going to solve any problems. We're going to end up with our x equation and our y equation. And you can follow that through and solve for whatever we're looking for. So let's just do the free body diagrams. Here's an object. It's a car driving around a ramp. There's no friction in this because if we do friction, it just makes it a little more complicated. We're going to keep it fairly simple. So we've got a car driving around a ramp. This is the radius of the curve in which it's going through. So let me draw my line for the road. And I'm going to draw my free body diagram. Is there gravity? Yes, there is. Is it sitting on a surface? It's sitting on a road surface. So we have uh, at 90 degrees, we have the normal. Uh, is there something pulling or pushing on it? No, there's no rope attached to the car, and there's no hand or anything pushing it. So really, these are the only two forces I have, because I've said there's no friction and there's no applied force. So this diagram must explain what's going on with this car going around a curve. Now this might look familiar, because it looks a lot like the free body diagram of something sliding down a hill. And when it was sliding down a hill, we made this our x-axis and this our y-axis. But we don't do that this time. Because this thing is going around a circle here. So the center of the circle is that way. So that must be the way it's actually accelerating. It's not accelerating down the ramp. It's accelerating this way. I'm going to make that positive. If it's accelerating this way, then we need to make our x-axis in the direction of acceleration. So I'm going to make this my x-axis and this my y-axis. Once we have the two axes, we need to break up anything that is at an angle to that axis and label it. So FG is along the y-axis. I don't have to worry about that. But FN, I can split it into two components like this. This is FNY and FNX. I split all the forces into components. I look at it and I say if it's accelerating along the x-axis, then there's no acceleration along the y-axis. If there's no acceleration along the y-axis, then everything should add up to zero that way. So that means FNY and FG are supposed to be the same. So I should make that a little bit shorter. And I should indicate that they're the same length that way. So these two are the same. What about the x direction? It's accelerating this way. So there needs to be more force this way than any other way. And if I look, there it is right there. That's the force that's causing this centripetal motion. There are no other forces in that direction. So that's the only one. So I say the sum of the forces in the x direction, I'm going to add them up, and that's going to give me an equation. Fnx is the only one. And in the x direction, it's going to equal ma. But because it's going in a circle, I'm going to use ac. So I have some choice here. I can use v squared over r. I can use 4 pi squared r over t squared. And I can even use 4 pi squared r f squared. But I've got these two here, that's fine. The one you use depends on what you're solving for in the problem. But this, this is the formula for the x direction. You're going to use that to solve the question. Let's look at the y direction. In the y direction, I can choose up or down as positive, because it's not accelerating. So I'm going to choose up as positive. So Fny minus Fg equals 0. It's accelerating this way, so in the y direction, there's no acceleration. MA adds up to 0. So this is the equation in the y direction. Using these two, I can solve for whatever the question is asking for, whether it's asking for the mass, or it's asking for what's the normal force, or if it's asking even what the angle is, because I've got the angle here, which is the same as the angle there. Okay. So in a second, I'm going to draw a completely different free body diagram for some other situation with objects going in a circle. OK, for my second centripetal force problem, uh, I'm looking at one of those uh, amusement park rides where it spins around and you get pushed against the wall. As the ride spins, you get pushed against the wall. Actually, as we know from centripetal force, it's really the wall pushing against you. But that's irrelevant at this point for our analysis. So if I draw a free body diagram of you, there is gravity on you. What's holding you up, though, from sliding down? Well, that would be friction. You feel pushed against the wall as the ride spins. That creates a normal force. With a normal force, you've got friction. Instead of sliding down, hopefully there's enough friction to keep you up. That brings us to the normal force. 
There's a normal force on you because is there gravity? Yes. Is it, sitting, is it on the surface? Yes, it's against the surface, so there's a normal force. Is there a friction? Yes. Is there an applied force? Well, the normal force is kind of the applied force, but there's no rope or anything. So here's my diagram. The direction of acceleration is that way, so that's positive. So all I gotta do is find the formula in the x direction, the formula in the y direction, and those are what I would use to solve a problem. So let's look at the x direction. In the x direction, I make this my x-axis, this is my y-axis. I've got Fn, nothing else. So that is going to equal Ma. But because it's going in a circle, it's going to equal Mac. So again, I've got some choices. Ac is v squared over r, or 4 pi squared r over t squared, or 4 pi squared rf squared. So this is the formula. In the x direction, I would put one of those in there and solve for something. Here's the formula in the y direction. In the y direction, it's not accelerating, so I can call up or down positive. I can say that force of friction is positive because up is positive. Minus Fg equals zero. It equals zero because it's accelerating this way, so it's not accelerating up or down. So these two things are equal, and they should be shown as that way in the diagram. So here's my diagram in the y direction, here's in the x. So if I just look at this, this, and this, somewhere in there is the answer to whatever I'm looking for, whether it's the mass, or what is the acceleration, or what is the friction, and in the friction there'd be mu, so I might be looking for mu. Whatever it is, this is the equation that's going to get there. Let's try one more, a third question.